Hello students, so there are just three months to your exam now, the NEET SS uh, Super Speciality exam and uh, the Fellowship Entrance Test FET, both of which are going to be in November. So a very common question now is what to prepare in the last three months, what all to revise, or if you're doing a first reading, what all to read, uh, where do we expect all the questions to be coming from? So what I would suggest is if you have read textbooks, well and good. If you haven't read the textbooks like William Spiroff and all those, the game is still not over. Uh, the last three months, you can make the most of it by reading all the guidelines. Uh, there are bodies like ASRM, ACOG, GTG and uh, ESHRI. Uh, they publish uh, guidelines, multiple guidelines in a year, and they keep revising their recommendations to whatever is latest, to whatever should be followed nowadays. So uh, what we'll see today is how to uh, know which all guidelines are there, which all guidelines you're supposed to read. If you're reading a particular topic, how to know what ACOG is saying about it, what RCOG is saying about it. If you're reading infertility, what ASRM is saying, what ESHRI is saying, and are there any Indian guidelines on it? So there are two ways you can either start topic wise and see what all guidelines are there or you can start guideline wise uh, maybe google ESHRI guidelines and uh, read find all the guidelines and read them so uh, i'll share you how i have been searching guidelines i'll share with you one second yes let me just share my screen to you so this is safari you can open it on Google or whichever browser window you're using. So what I'll do is, uh, suppose I have to read guideline wise, I have to see what ESHRI guidelines are there, what ASRM uh, practice committee opinions are there. So let's start with ESHRI guidelines. The easiest to find is these ESHRI guidelines. You just get a list of all the current guidelines on their homepage and you can simply download them. So I open this first guideline management of endometriosis. If you see the list is not very long, uh, that's four in five lines, so 22 guidelines in total are there. And suppose if I have to read management of endometriosis by HD, which is an extremely important guideline, you've got multi you have uh, got multiple questions in the previous year's exams from this uh, article. So uh, look at this uh, option in the left side, right side, sorry, read the full guideline. And that's how easy it is to download this. Do you want to allow downloads? Yes, allow. And that's downloaded. I'll open it in my downloads file. Now that's how you will download all the guidelines here. And uh, next up, we will see ASRM, extremely important guidelines. Uh, you have ASRM, I think, committee opinions is what they call their guidelines. Practice committee documents. Right, so this is the whole list of all the guidelines by ASRM. Evidence-based outcomes, I think I clicked on it, just one minute. Evidence-based outcomes after oocyte cryopreservation for donor oocyte IVF plan oocyte cryopreservation. That looks a complicated guideline. Let's look at the second easier one. You can click on it and just open it and read it. I don't think it is as important. Maybe I'll have to myself go through it and then tell you if it's important. So let us look at this guideline, diagnosis and treatment of luteal phase deficiency, a committee opinion 2021. And there was a question in the current AIMS exam, the 2021 AIMS exam, which was from this guideline. So it's very important to read the latest ones in all these bodies. And this is how easy it is to just open and download the ASRM guideline. What I did was I Googled practice committee uh, opinions by ASRM and I just clicked on the guideline here and you can download. Guidance regarding gamete and embryo donation. And there you have the guideline. So most of the guidelines are extremely easy to find. Now, uh, the other way around is suppose I have to read maybe thromboembolism in pregnancy. So today you decided you will finish thromboembolism in pregnancy. Now, if I Google thromboembolism in pregnancy, the first article which will, which will come will be a patient information sort of article, which we don't want. We want to read the relevant guidelines. So what I'll type is guidelines. Again, with guidelines, you may get a guideline which is from maybe Uganda 
or South Africa or one of the Asian countries, which we don't want, we follow American and European guidelines. So let's see thromboembolism pregnancy guidelines. And now I'll give you a very important secret, which I've been using. Just type the GFMER after this. And for all the topics, just write the topic's name, write guidelines and type GFMER after it. You get a GFMER site where they have enlisted all the guidelines that have been published by important bodies on this particular topic. So look at this first option here, embolism and thrombosis in pregnancy guidelines review. So when I open this, what you get is Geneva Foundation for Medical Education and Research and they give you a list of all the guidelines which exist currently on this topic. Now, you don't have to read all of these guidelines. Look at this Arab states of Persian Gulf. We don't want this guideline. Australia, Canada, we, you don't want all these guidelines. Just look at Europe, United Kingdom and United States of America. These guidelines and plus India and international. So just have a look at what, uh, how latest these guidelines are, are and we will see. Now look at this European guideline is European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology. That's your ESHRI. So an important guideline, you might click it, open it. The other one is United Kingdom RCOG. So these are your RCOG guidelines. That's where you get both the RCOG guideline on thromboembolism in pregnancy. Then you have uh, USA, you have American Journal of ACOG sorry AJOG uh, ACOG is the green journal the journal is called obstetrics and gynecology you have an SMFM guideline look at this very important amniotic fluid so I was looking for thromboembolism but what I've got here is amniotic fluid embolism diagnosis and management now this is a topic which you don't find in most of the textbooks and uh, Luckily, you found it here, amniotic fluid embolism, uh, though you wanted to read thromboembolism, but you came across this important guideline. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll just click on these guidelines and I'll open them. That's taking time. Let's see till then. I want to download this. I want to open both of this for you. So this is thrombosis, embolism in pregnancy, and puerperium. This GTG guidelines are the easiest to get all of them, uh, which can be easily downloaded. And this is the page which opens. I've downloaded it. Now look at this AJOG, uh, amniotic fluid embolism. It is an FM, SMFM article. Let's see if I can download it directly. Yes. You have to look at the word PDF. See here they've given PDF. That means you will clearly be able to download the PDF. So uh, you just saw that most of the important guidelines, it's very easy to directly download them. Some guidelines which you know are not available for which you need a subscription in the next video, which I'll be making a five minute video, I'll show you how to download those articles which for which you need a subscription and how to download them without a subscription. So I hope you understand how to read the guidelines now. Uh, there's a big list. All of these guidelines are these important. It's not important. I would suggest that right now don't go topic wise, just go guideline wise and finish the latest ones because these, those, those are the ones which are most important. So finish the latest ASRM guidelines, the latest ACOG, GTG guidelines. Similarly, I'll tell you how to open ACOG. Just write ACOG practice bulletin. So students keep asking me how to know which practice bulletin is important. Now, if I just write ACOG practice bulletin, I get a whole list, the current list, which is there, which they are following. So 2021, you see this anemia and pregnancy guideline given in August 2021, very important. I am sure there can be one or two questions from this current guideline. Then you have prediction and prevention of spontaneous birth, August 2021. So this is how often they update their guidelines. Every month they come up with a new guideline. Right, so uh, read all of these guidelines and some important topics which you want to read, just uh, write the guideline, uh, write the name of the topic, write guidelines and write GFMER. Uh, I think we opened it here. Yeah, like if you have to read uh, hypertension in pregnancy. I'll just write hypertension in pregnancy, then I'll write guidelines. And I'll simply type Geneva Foundation of Medical Education and Research. And then you get a GFMER. Uh, 
address. So this is the list of all the guidelines that should be read on hypertension in pregnancy. We are not interested in Ethiopian, Finland, France guidelines. We're inter interested in some international guidelines. You should just, just go through them. Just have a read of the topics. You will know which are important. And then uh, United Kingdoms, the NICE guidelines, United States, the ACOG guidelines. So this is for the time when there's a lot of time to read a particular topic and you can give two, three days to one topic. This is how you should read. Right now, I wouldn't suggest that you go topic wise, go guideline wise and finish all the guidelines. And when you read a guideline, you know what you should read the whole guideline and then memorize at least the recommendations and the conclusions and whatever last points are given. Right, so that's all for this video. Uh, next video, I'll tell you how to download without subscription. So that's all for today.